Welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. A few announcements before we begin. Uh, we keep in our prayers Judy Silk, who injured her arm this week, but is healing up well. Joyce Leslie, who is starting a chemo for cancer. Uh, Denise Chelberg, who is in transitional care. Lee, uh, Lee, who continues to be comfortable in home hospice. And in particular, we keep in our prayers the family of Marilyn Harrington, who died on May 20th. And her internment, it'll be a private internment at Roselawn Cemetery. So please keep all of those folks in your prayers. And also this is Memorial Day uh, weekend, and we remember those who have died in serving our country. And we are actually down at Lily Scogan Park where you can see the, um, the monument in remembrance of some of those from our area who have served and who have died. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and with one another wherever we may be. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. 
Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the very same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Aphelius, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends our reading. The Gospel of Cor according to John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth, on be, know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our creator, our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who dwells among us. 
with the messengers who spoke to the disciples after Jesus had risen into the heavens, we're giving that message today. I think it might sound a little more like this. Why are you standing there gobsmacked with your mouths open catching flies? It's time to move along. Jesus will return when he returns. Now go and be witnesses to the world. Gobsmacked is one of those words that is due for a comeback. Not only does it have a satisfying sound to it, but its meaning is quite useful. To be gobsmacked is to go beyond surprised to being utterly astounded. The disciples were beyond utterly astounded, as we are now in many ways. So imagine for the disciples and for other followers of Jesus, everything they have been through just without the spoilers. Jesus was their hoped for Messiah, the one who would free the people of Israel from the domination of the Romans. And then he was arrested. And then he was tried. And then he was crucified. And then he was dead dead for three days and then he rose and he was alive and he was among them for 40 more days. Imagine all the moments where they had to stop and try to understand the reality they were in the middle of. And every th time they thought they had it under control, things changed one more time. And after this 40 days, they'd gotten to that place of thinking this time would be different that Jesus would stay, that he would be the Messiah that they had always imagined, and that he was here to restore the kingdom of Israel. And even with, or perhaps because of his death and resurrection, many followers were still holding tight to this idea that he was the one who would come to return the kingdom of Israel to its glory. They had a tenacity around that idea. And they held on to that, even though we know what Jesus' ministry was all about. They had lived it. That Jesus was there mending what was broken, be it bodies or relationships. That his ministry was about including the marginalized, women and children and Gentiles. That his ministry was about forgiving sin and strengthening our faith. And if you think about it, almost nothing Jesus did would fit what you would need in somebody who would return, to, would return an earthly kingdom of Israel. Yes, he was charismatic and people were drawn to him. But to restore a kingdom, you need to overthrow the powers that are already in place. And if you're going to do that, you're not focusing on the broken, but on the healthy and the strong. You're not focusing on women or children or the elderly or foreigners. You're focusing on young men who can fight. But even though what he said and what he did didn't fit the mold of somebody ready to take over the world, there were those who held on to the hope that things would return to the way they once were in the glory days of King David. Even after, once again, Jesus was saying, God's time and human time, they're not the same. And then following it up with, the Holy Spirit is coming for you and you will be sharing my ministry, my ministry as it has always been, about healing and wholeness, about forgiveness and inclusion. And Even after hearing that again, there were those still holding on to this idea of the return. So indeed, you can imagine how gobsmacked they were when Jesus was lifted up and up and up until he was beyond their sight. And no wonder they just stood there staring. First, that just 
that doesn't happen every day that someone is lifted up. And secondly, because Jesus was leaving them again, and that was definitely not on their agenda. We know that feeling too. Even if before now you never said, Jesus, this was so not on my agenda, you've probably said some version of that at least once or twice in the last couple of months. I know that I have. We all have been in a time of being utterly and completely gobsmacked. We're trying to move from that time of staring out into space, dazed and confused, into a time of prayerful discernment. We're trying to discern what God's up to right now, what God is asking of us, God's followers. And this text for today is a good reminder of Jesus's, basically his last elevator speech. Trust in the Holy Spirit, share and live out my story with the world. But what about worshiping together in church? Trust in the Holy Spirit, share and live out my story with the world. But what about trust in the Holy Spirit? Share and live out my story with the world. And it's okay if you haven't found your equilibrium yet. It's okay if you're struggling to figure out what it means to be a follower of Christ when we cannot gather together in his name. We are in a time of utter astonishment. In fact, as a pastor, a friend of mine said after hearing how we're living in unprecedented times, his question was, when can I go back to living in precedented times? As we discern what's next, as you discern what's next, please hold these words in your heart. Trust in the Holy Spirit. Share and live out Jesus' story with the world. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with our prayers of intercession. Each prayer petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy, and I ask you to respond with, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable, especially those who have been affected by COVID-19. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful example of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. In particular, we lift up Marilyn Harrington. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to keep in your care and your healing, Judy, Joyce, Denise, and Lee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Stay home in peace, serve the Lord where you are. Thanks be to God, amen. <laughs>